Hey there guys and welcome to the last youth group live. I just want to say it's been super fun to to try something new. This has been new for me, you know, to try uh, to do something online like this. And I think it went well. I'm, I'm excited with how it went and stuff and how many of you guys have been watching. Thank you so much guys. Now, next week we're going to be back. So we're going to be back here. So for everybody listening to me, the goal is to be here at 6.30, at 6.30. So maybe show up a couple minutes early. Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna wait just a couple minutes to see you know, if everybody gets here and stuff like that. And then we're gonna jump into cars and we're gonna have a bonfire out at someone's house. And so it's gonna be sweet. So guys, next week, it's gonna be a bonfire out at somebody's house. And you know, if, if your parents are asking, okay, um, tell me what, you know, youth group's gonna do, just say to them, we're gonna be out at somebody's place outside and it's gonna be socially distanced so that we can make sure that we uh, are just like cleanly and safe and stuff like that. And then uh, we're gonna play some games and stuff like that. So there'll be more information on that coming soon. So we're back next week and I'm so excited for that. Now, a couple more things. Remember, right after this, we're gonna be doing Zoom groups and that's gonna be happening right after this. So don't go anywhere. I know some of you guys like to sneak away, but make sure to come and be a part of that also. There is going to be just like a couple normal youth groups here, and if you don't have the calendar, make sure you guys can get one for me next week, otherwise I sent one to your parents. So maybe ask your parents and say, hey, do you guys got a youth group calendar? I made some changes to it, and so make sure to check that out, but in, Two weeks, so next week we're gonna start up youth group again. The week after that, we're gonna have a normal youth group night. And then the third week, we're gonna do a special event called Fear Factor. And this is always something super cool. And we get some gross challenges, some, some physical challenges. We'll divide you guys up into teams and then we'll play some sweet games. And there'll be, some, there'll be a sweet prize for whatever team comes in first. So guys, make sure to come and be a part of that Fear Factor in three weeks. And then also there will be a guy's Bible study. We're working on something possibly for you ladies too, and that will be announced soon. But since, you know, uh, I, I can kind of set up that Bible study for the guys, we're just gonna go for it. And so that's gonna start on Thursday in three weeks as well. So that will happen too. Yeah, so lots of fun things happening. Let me pray for us, and then we're gonna jump into the last week of Life in Six Words. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this chance that we can gather together. Lord, it's so exciting that we get to live for you and that we can have eternal life through Jesus Christ, your son. And God, I just pray now as we jump into your word and talk about what life with Jesus looks like, that you would encourage us, that you would fill us with joy, and that we would live for you with our whole hearts. And we pray this in your name. Amen. So some of you have been talking to me about this and reminding me, hey, you got to do the drawing for the Culver's gift card from uh, if you completed your survey. Guys, I sent you a survey in the mail just recently and I've got the names right here. Da -da! There's 11 of you and I'm gonna be drawing right now, okay? So this is for the huge gift card for Culver's. And guys, thanks for sending those out. There's some of you that sent me really bad pictures of it, so like I can't even see it, but Thank you for doing that. I hope you thought that that was fun and it just kind of helps me to get to know you guys just a little bit too. So, all that being said, here we go. All right, let's see what I get here. This one, this one right here. The winner is Addison! Way to go! I hope you, uh, I don't know when I'm gonna get you that, but I'll get to it here soon, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for filling out the survey. And for everybody else that didn't win, sorry, maybe next time. I don't know when our next time will be, but it'll be sometime, so. Cool. All right, we're gonna jump into it, guys. Now, we're gonna do our life in six words uh, memorization. This is our last week, so guys, make sure that you take part in it, okay? Uh, we're gonna start with just saying it all the way through. Actually, we're just gonna say it all the way through twice. And so, hopefully you got these memorized, okay? The first time I say it through, 
uh, I'll just say the letters, and then the second time we'll say it through all together from beginning to end. So here we go. G. God created us to be with him. O. Our sins separate us from God. S. Sins cannot be removed by good deeds. P. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. E. Everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. And L. Life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. Okay, so guys, we're going to say the whole thing. Here we go. I'll say it with you. Here we go. G, God created us to be with him. O, our sins separate us from God. P, pain, no, S. S. S, sins cannot be removed by good deeds. P, paying the price for sin. Jesus died and rose again. E, everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. And L, life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. Nice. Cool, guys. All right, so we're finishing up this series, and this is the last one, which is crazy, guys. And to think about it, too, you know, this is the ninth, uh, you know, Youth Group Live, and so we've been doing this for a while, but guys, I'm so excited to kind of get back to normal and get back to normal Youth Group and see you guys. So, and I know the leaders are all super excited to see you guys, too. We're going to talk about Life with Jesus Starts Now and last forever this week. This is the climax. This is this is the sweetest part of this whole thing because, you know, what would the gospel be without a chance to continue it, to have it be practical in our everyday lives and to have it affect us every single day of our lives? And when I think about life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever, this is one of the most exciting parts of the gospel. Because it doesn't stop with the forgiveness of our sins, but we get to be a part of other people coming to know the Lord. We get to be uh, walking with him daily through the trials of our lives, being like him and following after his example, and then eventually seeing him, you know, in eternity. Dude, so exciting. So I wanted to start off with this question. The question is, when does eternal life begin? When does eternal life begin? And I want you to think about that. Give you a couple seconds. Where would you where would you say that it starts? I think maybe a lot of you, maybe a lot of you would say when when we die and when we see God face to face, that is when we would actually enter into eternal life. But actually, guys, we enter into eternal life according to the Bible right when we truly come to know. Jesus as our Savior and Lord, that we get eternal life right then. Um, and you know, it's not necessarily wrong to say that um, we don't get it until we reach heaven because that's when God says that we're glorified, that we get our, you know, redeemed selves and, um, and that we live forever. But in a real sense, that once we really know God for real in our lives, that we will never die. That um, when we die, we will be present with the Lord, the Bible says. Here's a couple of verses that just talk about eternal life starting right now. Eternal life, life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. So this is from John chapter 17. It says this, now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. What that verse says to me, guys, is just that eternal life isn't necessarily when we're on fluffy clouds, playing harps or whatever, you know, we think of, but eternal life is all about knowing Jesus Christ and having a relationship with him. That's pretty sweet. Uh, this is another one from John chapter 10, so a little bit earlier. Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish no one will snatch them out of my hand. So that's Jesus saying that when he was on this earth, he gave people eternal life and that those who followed him, uh, they never died. So pretty crazy. And you know, when you think about funerals, I just, I feel like I have to touch on this. 
when you think about funerals, it's totally, it's totally like a bummer situation, you know. Um, funerals can be really sad. Maybe you guys have a family member, a close family member that you know that, um, that died or something like that. And what's crazy is guys, if they know Jesus, then they never really died. That they're alive and that they're more alive right now than they've ever been. If you really think about that, man, eternal life starts right now. You know, sometimes I look at my own life and I, I have to ask this question. I mean, is this really eternal life? Is this my life and, and how I live every day? Am I really representing what eternal life looks like? Because guys, when, when the Bible talks about eternal life, it is this amazing thing that our life is totally focused around Jesus Christ and that we live gloriously. And it's just like amazing, you know, you think about your life in heaven, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, sometimes, like, how we think about heaven and stuff, it's totally off base. How many of you guys, when you think about heaven, uh, it's you're, you become a little baby angel and you're playing a harp, you know, and you have a naked butt and it's hanging out, and it's gross, and it's like a little ertle, like toy or whatever, and you're playing a little harp, like giggling and stuff. That's what heaven is. Yeah, yeah? Okay, I thought that for a long time, but that's totally not true. Actually, guys, when we think about eternal life in heaven, there, there is a huge spiritual aspect to it, but there's a, a physical aspect to it, that when we're in heaven, we're gonna be worshiping God, but then, uh, we're gonna be doing other things and so but while we're doing those things We're gonna be worshiping in a state of worship kind of like how we live right now and that um, You know heaven isn't this place where we're constantly singing songs But of course we're gonna sing songs, but it's gonna be this elevated kind of life now the key is Some of us say that we're Christians and some some of us say that we have eternal life but if we're really honest our lives don't look any different than anybody else's and this eternal life that we claim to have is totally not eternal life guys um, what that reveals about us is that we really need Jesus that we we need to actually surrender our lives over to him maybe for the, the first real time that we need to surrender our lives to him and say God I want eternal life I really do want to live for you um, please forgive me again and I need to follow you um, help me to do that and just like plead with the Lord that he would help you to do that um, eternal life is huge guys it's huge and so many people so many Christians people that claim to be Christian walk around and let's be honest they're not living eternally they are not they do not have eternal life man but I should be living at a level that's so high. I just have a couple things written down. Man, if I have eternal life, I should be growing in my walk with the Lord. I should be producing fruit. The Bible talks about that I should be telling people about him, that I should be growing in my character, that I should be um, serving others and producing good fruit. It says that I should be loving, that I should be evangelizing, that I should be holy. That means like set apart from the world. What does your life look like? Does it look like eternal life and some of this guys you know if if you're saying no it absolutely doesn't maybe you need to really make your relationship with the Lord real or maybe you need to renew your relationship with the Lord and really try to 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 love God with all your heart soul mind and strength in Galatians it says this this is talking about a uh, fruitful life it says but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Guys, that's what it looks like. That's what eternal life looks like. Is that what your life looks like? And, and how can you live more into that eternal life? You know, one of the weird things about the Bible and some of the things that it says, you know, like when we believe the gospel, we're forgiven, but we're not yet perfect you know we're we're treated as perfect by God so we're, we're already there but 
Like we get his forgiveness. We're washed white. That's what I mean by we're treated as perfect. Like God forgives us and he gives us a blank slate. But we're not perfect yet. So there's this sense that we are already there, that we're already, we, we have the righteousness of Christ that, that God gives us when we follow after him. But we're not there yet. That, you know, any Christian you ask them, man, I still struggle with sin. Man, I still wish I would live better. And so there's a sense in, in Christianity where it's already, but not yet. Already, but not yet. Um, this is a verse from Matthew, and this is talking about God's kingdom growing. And guys, what I want to say about life with Jesus is that it starts small and it grows. It, start, it starts small and it grows. So here's from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31. So he says, He put another parable before them. This is Jesus talking to his disciples, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree that the birds of the air come and make nests in the, in the branches. What is that saying? That's saying that God's kingdom is like this tiny little mustard seed. That it's the smallest of the seeds, but then it grows into this giant tree. And guys, what, what I want to say is that God wants to grow you, and he wants you to grow, um, to, to become more like himself. And so that you might say right now, man, I feel like you know my spiritual life right now is just a little seed. I feel like... Um, my eternal life right now is just like a little seed. Yeah, yeah, I, I know I have eternal life, but I still need to grow in that my faith isn't as big as what I want it to be. And guys, you know what's so cool is that when we follow after God with our whole hearts, that, that God wants to grow us, that he wants us to become everything that he is, that, that he wants this little seed to grow into this giant tree. And you know what's so cool? Um, we can really change our world, that we can really be change makers, that we can really make a difference, and that God can use us if we really live into this eternal life that he's given us, and if we grow um, intentionally. And so, I just wanna share you guys a really quick story, so, about the first Bible study that I ever uh, made. And first Bible study, I was in high school, this was like my senior year in high school, and first Bible study, I had evangelized people before, but I've never started a Bible study. And what I did was, so at school we made this club, and me and a couple other people, we gathered together, and man, as we were making it, I was so nervous. It was like a before school club called Sold Out, and by sold out, I meant, I meant S-O-U-L, ed so soul your soul so uh sold out and it was a cool name i thought at the time and i think it was done through lifelight or something like that so sold out and made this club it was kind of like fca or something like that maybe you guys have heard of fellowship of christian athletes but we got together and i had this video from john piper that we played and i remember getting donuts for everybody and orange juice i paid for it all right and I got it all together and I remember like pouring the orange juice and I was like, God, please send people, please send people. And I felt in that moment, guys, I felt totally unworthy to do what I was doing. That I felt like my faith was just a tiny little seed and I didn't think anybody was going to come and I, don't, I didn't think anything was going to happen. But what was so crazy is on that first day, uh, there was like 14 of us that came. And we watched the video and then we prayed and it was really cool. and. Uh, it went throughout the whole year, and I just remember though starting it though, I felt so inadequate. Maybe you guys are thinking right now to yourself, man, I really feel like, you know, spiritually, I, my, my spiritual life is just like a little tiny seed. Guys, God wants to grow that, but we just need to have the faith to step out and to live like God wants us to live. And so... Um, with that, guys, I just want to encourage you that God loves you so much and he wants a real, vital relationship with you and that you might feel like your faith is super small right now, 
but God just wants you to run after him, to read your Bibles, to pray, to be strong in your faith, and then to do what he's called you to do, and that God will grow you in your faith. Even if you don't feel worthy, even if you don't feel perfect, that God still wants to use you and to grow you um, as we reach out. And so with that, guys, we're going to pray, and then we're going to jump into Zoom group. So let's pray. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for this chance that we can gather together. Jesus, um, I pray that each and every one of us would take seriously the fact that, man, if we know you, we have eternal life, and that we would live like we have eternal life. God, I thank you for this time that we had together in your word and the verses that we read. Jesus, I pray that we would apply them to our hearts and that we would remember them, God, that we wouldn't forget. God, I thank you that youth group's gonna start up next week and just super excited to see everybody again. God, I just pray that you'd protect us and that you'd go with us as we do that. Uh, thank you for this time. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys, and with that, let's go Zoom Goops!